Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to today's video. This is a twofer as we're looking at two kits from Erica Synth's EDU line. Their new powerful kick drum and the super sweet and flexible hi-hats. We've already built the main basic system, but Erica and Moritz Klein continue to come up with new designs following the EDU ethos of truly learning electronics. These come with in-depth manuals that explain all of the inner workings of the design so you can truly understand what's going on behind the faceplate. So let's build both modules and then we'll take them for a spin and hear what they sound like, starting with the hi-hats. All right, so let's start by organizing all the parts on the bench and then we'll start with low profile components first. In this case, the diodes. Yeah, so we'll plug them in, mind the polarity of course, solder them on, I can do this from above, and then plug in the IC sockets and solder those on. I use the panel to keep the ICs in place as I turn the board around to solder. Now we'll continue with the uh, bypass capacitors. Now I take a picture because I noticed that uh, I will obscure some designators as I solder on. So I took a picture in case I need to refer back to the bare board. So once you're done plugging in all of the bypass caps, which can also be soldered from above in this case, we're gonna start with the resistors. Now, most of the resistors on this board are actually standing up TP style. This is why I didn't start with the resistors in this build. So just make sure you use the correct value in each position and you can also solder at least the exposed leg from above on each one of these resistors. That way they'll stay on when you have to turn the board around to solder the remaining legs of the resistors. Now, once they're all on there and secure, turn the board around. And in this case, since there was quite dense forest of leads, I actually was soldering and trimming as I went. So I would solder a few leads, trim them off, solder the next few, trim them off. That way I didn't have to be sticking the iron tip through a whole bunch of leads to get to each pad. So once all of the resistors are soldered and trimmed, I'll turn the board around and uh, touch up some of the solder work we can continue with the other capacitors. There are a few other film capacitors besides the bypass ones that we've already put in. So just make sure the designator is the correct one for each spot. I think I made a mistake and I had to remove one. That's why you're seeing my uh, desoldering braid on there. Now the transistors, again, make sure they're oriented correctly and in their right spots. Solder those on, trim the leads. and put on the electrolytic capacitors. These are polarized, so make sure they are oriented correctly as well. Now we can snap on the ICs into their sockets, bend their leads inward a little bit so they fit well. And once those are in, we can start with the hardware components. So let's plug in power connector first. I solder one pin to hold it down first and then proceed to solder the remaining ones. Now we're gonna plug in all of the jacks and pots and we'll fit them through the panel, tighten those nuts to hold it all together, turn it around and solder on all of the hardware. Give your build a nice careful visual inspection. Make sure that there are no cold solder joints, no shorted pads, no pads gone without soldering and so on and so forth. Once you've done that, you can just put on the knobs, check the power header for shorts and you're done. We can just plug it in and start making music. All right, moving on to the kick drum. The kick drum is actually an easier build than the hi-hats, so it's gonna be a little bit quicker and simpler. So let's again start by organizing all the parts on the bench and then plugging in the low profile components, such as the diodes, which are polarized, so make sure to orient them correctly. And in this case, the resistors, most of them go flat on the board, so we can go ahead and plug them in and then they can be soldered, all of these components can be soldered from above. Since these are plated through holes, the solder will make it to the other side anyway, so there's no need to turn the board around when soldering these components. Mm -hmm. 
Once they're all soldered, you can turn the board around to clip the leads. Touch up the soldering work from behind. And now let's put in the IC sockets. Again, I usually hold the IC uh, from behind and solder one pin for each IC socket to hold it down and then continue soldering the remaining pins. Now we'll put in all of the ceramic and film capacitors, which are not polarized, but do make sure to uh, follow the designators correctly. Put the right piece in the right spot. Again, solder them up, trim the leads, touch up the soldering a little bit. Now we can snap on the ICs into their sockets. Let's plug in the power connector and go on with the hardware stuff. So jacks, pots, tall trimmers. Again, slip on the panel, tighten the nuts and solder on all the hardware components. Again, give your build a nice visual inspection. Check the power header for shorts and you're done. So let's go check these out now. I'm going to put together a little drum machine with these on and we'll hear what they sound like and what they can do. All right, so here we are in my living room today. A little bit different scenario. And we're gonna try out the kick drum and the hi-hat from the Erica Synth's EDU line that we've just built, right? And uh, these sound unbelievable. They are super powerful. So let's get started. I have a, a sequence going here on the drum sequencer. We have the kick drum, the hi-hat. I also put on a snare and a clap just to round out the drum machine here. And I have the black joystick as a modulation source for some parameters here, both on the kick drum and on the hi-hat. And then this is a little mixer uh, and output module, the black output by Erica Synths. So let's start programming in some kick drums. So trigger select one. Ooh, that's pretty heavy right there. And right, let me turn down the... Yeah, I just wanted to see if this was distorting or if that's the normal sound. We've got a pitch control here. Now, tune depth and tune decay actually pertain to uh, pitch envelopes. So this is how long the pitch envelope, and this is how much. So the amplitude and the decay length. So you can make it a snappy short pitch envelope. Now tone. Now let's turn distortion down for now. Ah, right. So the distortion was adding a lot of harmonics there. So this is how this sounds without any distortion. There's a the tone control. Ah, which interestingly is brighter to the left. Right, so it's not your usual tone control. It's darker as you turn it towards the right clockwise. So clockwise darker, counterclockwise brighter. Nice, nice clicky attack there. And here, the big knob on this is the decay. So you can have a very long sounding kick there. Very nice. So here's a, a little bit drier. A drier kick sound. Right now, with the joystick here on uh, the first channel, I'm controlling the pitch. Right, so I can control the pitch of the kick drum. I can record a little movement here. All right, so now let's program some hi hats. Let's turn off that uh, pitch modulation for now. I'm going to shift select. Oh, sorry. Actually, we want trigger select. Second one here. Let's put some hi hats. Now, both of these modules have accent inputs as well and I have them connected to the accent outputs on the sequencer here. I just don't remember how to pro program accents. 
uh, how was it? Shift trigger. There we go. So now there, there are three states on, off, and accented. So now we're programming some. Now we can do the same with uh, the kick here. So that's shift trigger select. Ah, good thing I remembered. I made the manual for the sequencer. How was I going to forget? So we can have like a Right, an unaccented. Sounds cool. Yeah, it, it lacks that uh, snappy attack, the unaccented one. It's like a lower, softer sound. I really like it though. It's almost like having two kick drums. Very cool. So the hi-hat, this is the tune. You have the tone here, which is kind of a band pass filter in a way. The decay. The joystick is controlling both tune and the decay. So joystick up, decay long, joystick down, decay short, and we have tune down, tune up. It's subtle, huh? The tune, tune control is subtle, very subtle. Tone, those are pretty decent. Job of changing the, the overall sound quite a bit. So yeah, sounds really nice. Sounds like an 808. So let's. Uh, why don't we make uh, random modulation here? go now we have a randomly varying hi-hat and the kick drum maybe the kick drum can get a little lower in pitch wow that sounds so cool no let's add some snare and clap just to round out the beat I'll trigger select three that distortion.
not too little. Just with a bit of grunge. Now let's bring down the pitch a little bit again. Bring down the decay again. There it goes. So yeah, what haven't I talked about? So we can focus on that hi-hat and kick again. Yeah, just these two. This is already a very danceable beat. I like it. I think I, I wouldn't necessarily need more than just kicking hi-hats, right? I love how the distortion almost has like an envelope filter in a way. Because as the uh, amplitude goes down with the envelope, with the amplitude envelope, the distortion reacts differently, adds less harmonics as it's softer. So it's like, bow, bow. Very cool. All right. So I think that's it. There's not that much else to talk about these modules. They're really fun builds. To learn a lot about electronics. They sound classic, brutal and powerful and beautiful. Is this the camera here? Yeah. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. And uh, stay noisy. Please hit like and subscribe.